41. Introducing Change Melissa's Point of View The whole afternoon and night felt like a distant dream. After the fight and my confrontation with the enforcers, everything was a blur. I was grateful for Fang, since without him, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have been able to function. The morning was sure to bring new challenges. We spent our first night back in the pack house at Fang's old bedroom. I wasn't ready to take over Hunter's suite. First, I needed to redecorate, something that was the complete opposite to the tacky love suite Hunter had made, but still different from how it used to be when my parents lived. I needed a new beginning. How did you sleep? Fang asked. I could tell he was worried about me. I have to admit that I slept very well. I guess I was exhausted after all that fighting. I'm happy to hear that. Are you ready to face the pack? Yesterday was a disaster. Today we'll need to meet with everyone and set some kind of order. I hardly remember everything that went down last night. Did I really have to fight all those wolves? Yes, most of the enforcers challenged you. I had to step in a few times to avoid more than one attacking at the same time. Isn't that something we should punish them for? I mean, I'm their alpha. They should show me more respect. It won't be so easy. My dad's leadership taught them to forget the rules and do whatever they wanted as long as they were loyal to him. That's some loyalty there. I didn't see anyone stepping in to defend him two nights ago. My guess is they were intimidated by Dagger as a representative from the Uber Pack. But today is going to be harder. We need to go over everything my dad has done and try to sort it out. We have a better understanding of how the other packs work, so let's hope we can set things right. I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but Fang was right. We needed to start. This was my pack, and I needed to start acting as the Alpha. I needed to set some ground rules and start changing things for the better, I hoped. Fang followed me down the stairs and I knew he was giving me space to show the others that I wasn't under his control. I knew that had to be hitting his pride, and I was grateful for that. If I wanted things to work out, I needed his support. When we arrived downstairs, we found his family was gathered at the table, being waited on by some of the women I had seen my last time there a couple of months before. Good morning, I said with fake cheerfulness, and saw Fang glancing at me. How is everyone today? Some of the people eating waved at me. Most just ignored me. The women working in the kitchen bowed to me, and I could feel the tension and fear in them. You need more than appear relaxed. You need to relax. Your vibes are full alpha right now. Fang whispered at me, and I realized he was right. I was angry. Have you finished? I asked a couple of hunters' whores, sitting at the end of the table. Why? Do you need our seats? One of them asked. Not me. Them. I said, pointing to the ones serving them. Since you're finished, you can give your seats to them and bring their food. You want us to serve them? Are you crazy? They have been helping you. Don't you think it's time to return the favor? That's not necessary. We can eat in the kitchen, one of them said. I know it's not necessary, but it's what I want, and they have to start adapting to their new reality. So you won a fight, and now you think you can do whatever you want? That's exactly what I think, and that's exactly what it is. Since I won, I'm the new Alpha, and that means that if you want to stay in this pack... You need to start working for your spot. No more free rides. We are the mates of the former Alpha. We deserve to keep our position and to retain certain privileges. Sandra said regally. First of all, you are not the former Alpha's mates. He never mated with any of you. He refused to acknowledge you as anything more than bedwarmers. And you have some nerve to come to my face and say that the former Alpha's mate should have privileges. 
after the way you treated my mother. So this is revenge. Revenge would be to do to you what you did to her. To humiliate you and tear your wolf away from you and let you suffer a slow and painful death. But no, what I want to do is to give you the chance to grow up and do something useful for the pack. You could start by sharing some of the kitchen work and sharing your table with the rest of the pack. You may also start thinking about what kind of jobs you want to do and if you want to stay here or have your own houses. This is our home. You can't kick us out, Sandra said. And since everyone supported her, I assumed she was going to be their spokesperson. The pack house was created for the Alpha family and for those weaker members of the pack that need protection. I don't have family left, thanks to Hunter. Fang's siblings, of course, can stay. And you, as unmated females, can request a room. But forget about the monstrosities you live in. I'm planning on returning the rooms to their original sizes, since I will be moving more people here. And if you want to stay, you'll need to work. Forget about lounging all day in the couches. You will help with the cleaning and cooking. Or you can go out and look for a job. If you don't want to stay, I will assign one of the houses to you. Are you going to let her do this? Fiona asked Fang. She's crazy! That's standard protocol in most packs. Like she said, the pack house is for those who need it. When father took over, he joined three or four rooms to create the suites we use now. And we are going to start reverting that to have more room. And Menace is right, people need to earn their keep. Since you are underage, we won't be too severe with you. But still, you need to start helping around. Why are you calling her Menace? That's an alpha nickname. She doesn't deserve it. And we are your siblings. How can you even suggest doing this to us? She earned that name. The alpha of the Uber pack gave it to her. So I will use it. And we all need to start living in the real world. Father always said we needed to be tough on people to show them their place. And I'm afraid that now is our turn to learn our places and start working to earn our positions. You suck! One of Fang's younger sisters exclaimed as she went to him, kicked him in the shin, and then stormed out of the place, followed by whom I supposed was her mother. More of his siblings also followed her, but most of the whores stayed. I hated all of them but I knew that I couldn't let my feelings dictate my actions if I wanted to be a better alpha than Hunter. I needed to put my personal needs to the side and deal with what was best for the pack. It was all so complicated. I couldn't convince the women that it was okay to sit down with us, but we ended up finishing our breakfast and prepared to face the rest of the day. First, I needed to get a better idea of what I was dealing with, so I went to Hunter's old office which was mine now, I guessed. Do you have any idea where your father has the pack census? I don't even know if he has one. Fang said. But if he does, it should be around here. He went to a file cabinet and got a few files out. The first was a list of pack properties, another a list of families, another a list of unmated females, along with underage females and when they would become adults. This is kind of disturbing, I said, showing the file. It is, and it will be useful in case we need more evidence once the Uber pack find him and takes him to trial. Something like this makes it very obvious where his mind was going. If we gather all this info, we can get a good idea of the situation, but it's not enough. This is important. He said, showing me another file with information about the pack finances. It is but we should have an accountant to give us a better idea of this, right? My father didn't trust him. It will be helpful, but won't give us anything we need. This has information on some accounts that not even the accountant has. I really hope that with all of this, we don't have to deal with fraud. Pack money and personal money have to stay apart. I've been thinking about that, and I think your father should have some money saved apart from the pack money my father took over. Paul told me that your father took most of that money, but there was some kept safe. He gave me all the information to be able to access it, 
It was one of the reasons your father was after Paul. He wanted all of it. Well, we will have to see what he did with what he took. After a couple of hours going over the files, it was clear we didn't have a census, only an approximation. The pack was medium-sized, so it wouldn't be that difficult to make a count. But still, it was something that would only waste time we could be using for something else. After eating, we were visited by the elders of the pack. From what I had seen in other packs, they were there to advise and help with the pack. But Hunter had ignored them. Now they were trying to get their old jobs back. Greetings, Alpha. Patrick, the older one, said. It is a privilege to be able to see you take over the pack. I was here when your father was the Alpha, and I know you will make him proud. It's good to have someone from your bloodline back in control. We are here to help you. You must have a lot of questions about how to be a good Alpha. We can guide you in this new journey you will be facing. Andrea, an old woman, said. I do have questions. Like, for example, where were you when my mother was dying? Where were you when I was being bullied and ignored by everyone? I will be grateful for any help you can give me, but if you think you can come here and manipulate me into being your puppet, you are clearly mistaken. There was nothing we could have done. You could have given us food when we were hungry, offer a helping hand when my mother needed strength, stepped up for us when we were suffering. But you decided not to, so don't think for a moment that your crocodile tears and pretty words are going to change anything. If I need advice, I have the Uber Pack to help me, and other Alphas to guide me. I may need your help with information, but that's it. I realize that from your side, things may look bad, but there was truly nothing we could have done to help you and your mother. Any attempt to help you only attracted Hunter's attention and anger, not just to us, but to you too. Trying to help your mother only made her life more difficult. That's an excuse. You could have done a number of things to help, but you chose not to. Do you really think I'm stupid? I know exactly how vicious Hunter was. I suffered from it. And yet, here I am, and I won't make the same mistakes you have done. Right now, I have to fix things and help those who need it. And it won't happen by the hand of a bunch of selfish pricks who care more about their own behind than others. I will be working on righting the wrongs done by Hunter, and you better not step in my way. I'm so sorry, child, Andrea said. It seems we did you wrong by not speaking up. But we didn't know things were so bad. We cannot change the past. We only hope we can work together in the future. First of all, I'm not a child. I am your Alpha. But if you want to help, I need to know more about the needs of the people. I know that some hid their needs from Hunter for fear he would use them against them. But I just want to help. Help me with that. It would be a good starting point. That we can do, one of the elders that had remained silent said. And I'm truly sorry for everything you went through, child. I mean, Alpha. And we will do our best to help you rebuild the pack to what it was in your father's time. They left, but they didn't fool me. I knew that they were only worried about their own positions and status. My father's beta is waiting to talk to you. He wanted to talk to you since yesterday, but I thought it would be better to make him wait a while. Fang said. Do you want to deal with him? I asked. No, you better do it, or he will never accept you. Let him in. It's about time. Jake roared. You may have a lucky shot at Hunter, but being an alpha is more than looking pretty and lounging in the office. You need to do actual work. I would never have guessed that from the way Hunter conducted his business. He never cared much about his people, or what they were doing. But I'm glad you're here. You can help me. 
I'm looking for the pack census, and I can't find it anywhere. Why would you need that? He asked. I need to know how many people are in the pack. If you did it right, you should feel the bond. You will feel if one is broken or a new one is formed. He said. I feel the bonds, but I can't distinguish individual bonds, so I don't have a number. Well, little girl, Hunter didn't need a paper telling him stuff like that. You will be working with Fang. I need you to tell him everything you know about the day-to-day -day workings of the pack, especially financial stuff and work assignments. I don't trust you, and we will be keeping our eyes on you. Understood? Works for me. He said, looking at Fang. You are a disappointment to your father, but at least you have some promise. Maybe one day you'll be someone worthy of your father's legacy. My father's legacy is pain and failure. I'm aiming a little higher. Fang said. Don't worry, I will deal with him. I don't want you near trash like this. Thank you. I think it's time for me to take a walk around the pack and see what I missed since I was last here. Are you going alone? He asked, concerned but trying to hide it. Don't worry. I'm well rested and ready to face whatever challenges come my way. And I think that after yesterday, the enforcers will know who's in charge. All right, take care. Forty two. Pack business. Thanks, POV. You are whipped, kid, Jake said. You should be taking control of this place instead of letting that bitch order you around. Be more careful how you refer to your alpha and my mate. I'm warning you, things are going to change. And if I find you are taking advantage of anyone here, I will deal with you myself. You will learn to respect the members of this pack. Every member in the pack has a function and a place. Both of you need to understand that and accept it. If you let her control you, then you wouldn't be doing your job. Things are going to change. Get used to it or it will be very painful to you. I knew that most of the enforcers would be against Menace's reforms. They also took advantage of my father's way of doing things. Some of them have gotten their women by promising them they would not have to be with my father. It was one of those things I hadn't seen at the time. I never understood exactly why their mates were so meek and useless, but I was realizing that they had no other choice. Mating was forever, unless they found their true mates and agreed to leave the relationship to follow their true calling. But I was sure that Menace was going to find a way to make things easier to every woman caught in a difficult mating. You don't want to kick the hornet's nest. Everything is working just fine. No need for changes, Jake said. If everything was working fine, then the Uber pack wouldn't have gotten involved. Right now, they are only after my father. But if they find out that more people was involved on their own free will, more heads are going to roll. Is that what you want? I don't think that Menace is going to keep you around as beta. But if you don't change your attitude. I'm afraid she won't even keep you as part of the pack. Is that what you want? To lose every privilege you have instead of a few of them? You have seen what she is capable of. And you must remember, I'm not a pushover. So you better adjust your attitude. I'm not afraid of a couple of pups, he said with a snarl. You should. You really should. I knew I needed to meet with the rest of the enforcers, but I had a bad feeling about it. I needed to stop being in the shadows and take a more central position, or I would never earn the respect of the pack. It was bad enough that I had let Manus fight my father instead of facing him myself, but I had been letting her make all the decisions, and for many that would be taken as a sign of weakness. I guess she knew that and was waiting for me to do what I needed to do in order to establish my position. I had a feeling that after all our misunderstandings in Rocky Start, she was starting to trust me, and I needed to be worthy of that trust. By meeting with the enforcers in the pack, I realized that most of them wouldn't change their ways easily. They liked the status quo. A few of them would change their mind, but it wouldn't be easy. It's been a while since I've been here, so I want you to put me up to speed on the work you have been doing here, how the shifts divided and basically what you do for the pack. We will also have to work on a census. We need to know how many people we have and their names. It seems my father didn't have a formal census of the pack. He was only interested in the unmated females and the warrior age males. One of them said. We will need to start by mapping the houses. 
I know we have the info for the ones owned by the pack, but we need to also have account of the ones owned by the pack members. Technically, your father owned the whole town, one of them said. Even the houses that we are supposed to own are in his name. Yeah, said an older one. The former Alpha allowed us to own our land and houses, but your father requested we put everything in his name. That way, if we did something to piss him off, he could kick us out of our homes. If you have proof of that, I'm sure that's something that Menace will want to fix, I said. If you have any proof or ownership of the land or houses you inhabit, then you should look for it and present it to her. I assure you, she will want to fix whatever my father did that can be seen as detrimental to the pack. I'm sure your father was only doing what he thought was best, Jake said. And I'm sure my father was only thinking about what would allow him to control the pack better. He took it by force. And I'm sure he did his best to stop people from trying to free themselves from his control. I have traveled a lot and met most of the packs in the country. And I have seen a lot. My father's ways of doing things is far from the norm. I have no idea how he managed to keep the Uber pack off his back for so long. But it's time for things to change. What about us? Are we to become babysitters for the weaker members of this pack? Jake said mockingly. That's the job of the enforcers in most packs, to protect the weaker members, not to take advantage of their positions to bully them. You don't seem to remember what you and your siblings did. You weren't the protective kind before. One of them dared say, but since he was right, I couldn't say anything to him. Everyone can change and see the error in his ways. I'm focused not on making this a better pack. Change is not easy, I know. But you work for the pack and the alphas. Once you give me the patrol schedule, we can see how we can accommodate shifts for you to help with other tasks. This is for the pack. Remember that. The anger in most of them felt heavy around me. But I wouldn't allow it to stop me. I needed to know how well our lands were protected. And I needed to know what could be done to improve it. A pack with a new alpha often attracted attention and I needed to be ready. We needed to be ready for trouble. Our next step was to some of the business we had in the pack, our sources of income. I knew that I needed to pay attention to that. It was our livelihood and I needed to make sure that it was being well managed. For all the things that Menace wanted to do, we would need money. Also, I needed to look for her inheritance. I knew I was sure that my father had not been fair in that. She most likely had money that he had withheld from her and her mother as a form of control. And I couldn't let that continue. Also, I needed to make sure to leave some of my father's money apart from my siblings and their mothers. Even if they didn't deserve it, it was theirs. By the time I returned, it was late and the sun was already sinking in the sky. I found Menace still working in the office and she looked a little stressed. How was your day? I asked. I feel like this is going to be harder than I thought. I believed people would be happy to be rid of Hunter and embrace change, but they either don't trust me or they're afraid of me and I don't understand it. Well, some of them are used to see you as an Omega, bottom of the pack. Then they see what you did to my father and realize you are no pushover, that you could be out for blood after everything you went through with the pack. I'm just trying to do what's right, you know? But I can't do it alone. She said in frustration. You are not alone, I assured her. And she smiled. If you are with me, then you will need to be with me while I face a very difficult task. She said. I tracked the guys that take care of most of the construction work in the pack, and they agreed to start working tomorrow fixing the rooms. But we need to start moving people now. At least clear one of the rooms to be remodeled. We agreed that my siblings would stay in their rooms as they are, I reminded her. Yes, your siblings are safe. But I don't see why we would need to extend that kindness to their mothers. I don't want trouble right away. So could you tell me who was the least favorite? That way the others won't try to rally in her defense. At least, not as hard. Yeah, I think that would be Nellie. And I think we can move her without much trouble. Since her little fur is very high maintenance and will likely request her mom to stay with her since my dad is not here. 
From what I heard, a few days I stayed here lately, she spent most of her nights either with my father or in Fur's room, not much in her own. Perfect. We could move her stuff to one of the smaller rooms, but give her the chance to stay with her daughter if she prefers. I knew it was a good idea, but it wouldn't be as easy as she expected. The suites that most of my father's women used were a symbol of status, and losing them would be hard for them. Especially if men had started moving in other people who really needed them, and they would see as inferior. Also, I was afraid they would try to do something dumb, mostly because if Manus did something to them, my siblings would resent that. We had already discussed the possibility of moving them to houses, but it presented the same prestige issue. No one would be willing to move to a house and not be considered part of the Alpha family. We had a tough road in front of us. Forty-three. Resistance to change. Menace's point of view. It was all so hard. Even those I was trying to help were reluctant to follow my orders. Their fear ran too deep. I wasn't sure if I should be angry at Hunter or at them. I knew it had been hard on everyone, but especially for me and my mother. And still, we fought to get out, while the others just accepted their fate and endured. It was sad, pathetic, and it made me feel extremely frustrated. You can't do this to me! That's my room! I was getting a headache from all the screaming going on, and I was getting tired. That's my room. I'm the Alpha. Everything belongs to me. Now... I'm giving you a new room, or you could go stay with your kid. I hear you usually stay with her, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Hunter gave me that room. I gave him a kid, and he promised he would take care of me. Do you see Hunter anywhere around here? No, because he is gone, and most likely he will never come back. The Uber Pack want him, and they will most likely lock him up or straight up kill him if enough can be proved against him. Either way, you can't depend on him. I'm being very generous by giving you a place to stay at all, but if you keep bothering me, I won't be as generous. Is that a threat? How dare you? Again, I'm the Alpha, and I can do whatever the hell I want. And right now, what I want is to call the Enforcers and have you dragged all through town and thrown in a cell so you can compare and realize just how generous I'm really being. She's not joking, you know. Fang said. You are pushing it. All of his family were looking at the drama from the doors of their rooms. So far, no one had dared to intervene, but I knew they were thinking of it. Maybe Fang was right, and since she wasn't well-liked, they were thinking about the dangers of getting my attention and being next. But I could tell they were thinking about the benefits of stopping or trying to, now, before it was their turn. I have an Alpha's daughter. That has to count for something. I'm important, the woman insists. And I kind of get it. Hunter always valued the ones that gave him kids. I was also an Alpha's daughter. That didn't change anything, did it? And I was an Alpha too, born from two Alphas. Your daughter is a Beta, and you are just a Gamma who has forgotten her place. I had done it a few times, but not on purpose. It's something that I don't really get, but I use my Alpha powers, my presence. Everyone I can see, well, except Fang, turn their heads down and show their necks. They were submitting to my dominance. Some of them are shaking, and it's something I had seen happening with some people in the presence of the members of the Uber Pack. I'm not sure if I like it or not, but it's a trip either way. I think you proved your point. Dial it back. Your presence is too strong for them. Fang asks, and I do, because I can see some of his siblings are in tears. Most of them are in shock. I get you are angry, but I think you don't realize just how strong you really are. What? How? Fiona says, 
just before slamming her door closed. Soon, all the others are also running away. And for a moment, I don't get it. What was that? That. Fang says with a sigh. Is my siblings finally realizing who they are dealing with? I think they still thought they would be able to bully you. But now they see what my father forced you to suppress. I think they finally understood that you are really an alpha. I just hope this gives us a break. I'm tired of dealing with this bullshit, I said, and turned to see that we were all alone. Well, I'll see if someone is willing to help move all this stuff to the smaller room. Alpha. One of the enforcers is behind us. He's one of the younger ones, and I'm not sure if that makes him more trustworthy or less. The crew is here. They are asking where they are going to start. He says, The main bedroom, I said immediately. No matter how eager I am to start converting the suites Hunter created for his whores back into rooms for those in need, I won't be able to sleep in the main bedroom until I get rid of every trace of Hunter in there. I want everything from Hunter gone as soon as possible. I don't want anything from him left in there. Hunter invested a lot in getting that room as it is. Are you sure you want to get rid of all that? Of course. It's an awful room. And worse yet, it represents just how corrupt and sick Hunter is. I say, and I notice Fang flinching behind me. Just strip the room bare and take all those mirrors out. Once it's a blank canvas, we'll see how to fix it and make it our own. As you wish. He says, in a tone that implies I'm wrong. But I don't bother to address the disrespect. I'm again starting to wonder if all this will be worth it. It's true that the pack is my legacy. The territory has been in my family for generations. But it's been so corrupted by Hunter that it's hard for me to see it as mine or to see anything from my father in it. Are you okay? Fang asks me, looking at me with concern. And I have no idea what has made him ask something like that. Of course. Do you think we should go shopping for a new furniture for the bedroom? Or have someone build something for us? We could browse a few catalogs and see what we can find. If there is something you, we can't find, we have it custom made. He suggests... Sounds like a good idea. We'll need some basic furniture for the new rooms anyway. We can search for both. I start moving towards the office when a weird sensation goes through my body. It's an odd sensation, like something is crawling on my skin, but not quite. I suddenly realize that it's something much deeper and complicated. For some reason, I understand that we have visitors someone is entering my territory. Just as I'm thinking that, I hear the phone in the office ring and run to pick it up. Hello? I ask, and I feel stupid. We have a man saying he wants to talk to you. The voice on the other side responds. It's Paul, the guy that escaped. Should we take him to the dungeons? The one with a problem with him was Hunter, not me. Bring him to the pack house and treat him right. He is my guest. And maybe the future Beta, if I can get him to agree to accept the position back. I'm not sure he will accept. He will say his time is done, and that he is as disconnected from the pack as I feel. But I need someone I can trust, and so far, I'm afraid everyone is ready to betray me at the first opportunity they have. Paul is coming, I inform Fang. He is much an outsider as you are. He says. I know you trust him, but I'm not sure it's a good idea to have him around at this time. He was my father's beta. He already knows what to do, and he can help me figure out how things were before your father came here. He will be a great help. I knew he was right. Most people wouldn't like him. But I needed people I could trust, and I knew that most of them were just waiting for me to fail. But Paul, he would have my back. He was the beta a long time ago. He is not the fighter he used to be, and the position requires a strong wolf. Fang pointed out. Okay, 
Then who do you suggest? That I don't know. The only ones I really know are those who work close to my dad. And we know we can't really trust them. Then we will need Paul, at least for the time being. I don't really know the members of the pack. They always keep their distance from me. And until we know for sure who to trust, we need to protect ourselves. You don't trust anyone. You barely trust me, don't you? Fang asked, and he was right. No one has given me any reason to trust. Not anyone of power. I only had contact with those too weak to help themselves. Those who really couldn't help me. It seems Paul arrived. Fang said, moving to the door. And he was right. Paul walked into the office, escorted by two enforcers. It's good to see you, I said, going to hug him. Alpha. Paul said, bowing to me before I could reach him and hug him. We have a lot to talk about. You can leave, I say to the rest of them. I could tell they weren't happy about Paul being there, but that was their problem, not mine. 44. Finding a Beta Fang's POV I felt like it was a bad idea, but there wasn't much I could do or say about Paul without getting into trouble with Manus. She trusted him, and why wouldn't she? He had been the only one to be by her side and help her when everyone else gave her their backs. From what I knew, he had been the one to train her, help her with her shifting, and even feed her when there was no food available to her. I really got why she trusted him, but I wasn't sure he was the best choice as a beta. He was too old and weak to fight for his spot, and a weak beta would weaken her position. I watched as Paul and Menace greeted each other. Paul was being very respectful, and I had to admit it was the right move. Menace needed to maintain her image in front of the enforcers. Any show of weakness would be very dangerous for her. Thank you for bringing him here. You can go now. I dismissed the enforcers. They were still adapting to the situation, and I could tell they wanted to know what was going on. My dad had kept Paul locked up for a few days, and a few of them had gotten their chance to kick him while he was down. I wasn't sure what was going to happen between them. I'm glad you could make it. There's so much I need to talk to you about. Menace told Paul. But let's get to the point right away. The main reason I asked you to be here is because I need your help. I need you to be my beta. I don't know if that's a good idea, Paul said. I'm too old for the position. You need someone young and strong. But there's no one I can trust here. You are the only one. There are few here that could take the position, and even less you could trust. But you are limiting yourself. Why not look outside? I wouldn't know where to start, Menes said, and I could hear how disappointed she was. And even if I agreed that Paul wasn't the right choice, I really wanted to hit him for making a sound so defeated. There are a few unmated females in the pack. Send them to other packs looking for mates. I'm sure one or two must find their mates. That way you could expand your pack and look for beta candidates. I would suggest starting with the Uber pack. I'm sure they would be willing to join for a good position. I'm not sure if I feel comfortable using that kind of tactic. You will be giving most of the females their chance at finding their true mate. Nothing bad about it. I have to admit it is not a bad plan. I had to admit. But we are letting a lot to chance. We won't be able to pick. We will have no idea of the kind of people we will be recruiting. And it still is the chance that the females from the pack will choose to leave to be with their mates. Either way, that doesn't solve our problem right now. I need someone to help me. I need a beta. And I'm not keeping hunters. He's as bad as he is. I need someone who will help me, not someone who will look for ways to sabotage me. I can stay until you find someone else. And even after you find yourself a good beta, I will stay as an advisor for as long as you need. Thank you, Paul. I knew I could count on you. 
Menace was happy again. But she was putting a lot of hope on Paul and I wasn't sure if he would be able to help her as much as she needed. On that note, I needed to step up and find a way to help her more. I couldn't just say what she couldn't or shouldn't be doing. I had to find answers. So, where do we start? Paul asks. Well, we are still working on the finances. I feel like Hunter was using his money and the money of the pack as the same. So everything is in his name. And I need to understand the pack finances to see what we can do and can't do. I will be happy to help. That sounds easy enough. Paul says cheerfully. It may not be as simple, I said, and we have to make sure there are no hidden accounts or anything like that. My father's beta is supposed to be helping, but I'm not sure if we should trust him not to hide a few things. I walked around the house, watching as people carried out things from my father's room, my room now. Most of my family was watching, and I could tell it was hard for them. It was the end of an era, and it was finally catching up to them that their reality was no more. Fang! Fiona called. Are you really going to let her do this to us? Do what? I asked, even if I knew what she was talking about. She is taking everything from us, Fred said from behind him. I turned and saw him. He was mad, but there was fear behind his anger. First she is kicking out our mothers out of their rooms, and then what? Is she going to kick us out too? Are you going to let her? She is right to call all of you brats, because you are, I said. Everything we had is not really ours. She will do right by you and give you what you deserve. And that's more than our father did for her. Much more than what we did for her. And Alpha takes care of the orphans in the pack, and since that is gone, Menace will take care of you. You will have a room and food and clothes and all your basic needs, but nothing more than you deserve. And you won't be the only ones. And like our dad, she will take care of everyone. Our rooms used to be two or three rooms used for housing pack members, and she's reverting back to that because that way she will be able to take care of more people. She will bring more people here and help them, because that is what a true alpha is. Our dad was a good alpha. Little Fern protested. No, he really wasn't, I said. He was good to you and to me, to his women when he was in a good mood, but not to his pack. I have traveled a lot and seen how things are in other packs. I thought we were better than them because we did things differently. But then I realized that we were wrong, that our father was corrupt. Do you think the Uber pack is after him just because Menace asked him to? They investigated and found enough evidence to decide he was a bad alpha and that he needed to stand trial. What he did to Menace and her mother is just the tip of the iceberg. He used his power and his position to abuse the people in the pack, and he will be punished for that. He did what he wanted because he was strong, and the strong can decide what to do and to whom, Finn said. Really? Then Menace can do whatever the hell she wants. She already proved she is stronger than that, and you felt her power. Just because she was forbidden from doing what she needed to defend herself in the past, don't think she won't be able to fight back now. She already defeated Dad, then she fought all the enforcers and won. You think any of you stand a chance against her? Are you not strong enough to fight her? Fiona asked me, and it was a challenge. She really thought she could fool me into fighting her. Why would I have to? She is my true mate. That means we are a team. We don't fight each other. We fight for each other. You are my family, and I will never leave you on your own or hurt you in any way. But the way things are right now will change. You have to start working for the pack as any other member. And you won't have the same privileges you used to. Menace won't stand for you to keep abusing the rest of the pack. And I don't think I want that either. I know I'm kind of a hypocrite for asking this, but after watching just how much you hurt her with your bullying, my eyes have been opened. I won't let you keep abusing others. You are not better than anyone else in this pack. You suck! Fred yelled at me, and I felt awful about it. But there wasn't much I could do about it. They needed to grow, and it wasn't fair to keep spoiling them. Sooner or later, they would have to face reality.
just like I had to. I will do my best to help you in this transition, but you need to start changing your way of thinking. For if you stay the same, it will be harder for you to face reality. You felt how powerful Menace is. You can't challenge her. And even if you left to another pack, you would be facing the same issues. This wasn't supposed to happen. Fiona said. You are supposed to be on our side. And you allowed your mate to drive our dad away and take everything from us. No. I helped my mate to take back what was hers. Dad was the one in the wrong. And I'm helping fix things. Now you should go and look for ways to help with the pack. If you find something you like, it will be easier for you when you are asked to work. In a good pack, every member cooperates for the group's well-being. You have been living from the work of others. It's time you did your part. I felt bad about them. Dad had spoiled them, taught them that they deserved to be served by others and they didn't need to move a finger, for everyone else had to work for them. I knew that Menace wasn't going to let them get away with it anymore. She was ready to fix everything that was broken in the pack. And my siblings were part of it. 45. Pack Reforms Menace's Point of View I had in front of me the list of all the mates of my enforcers while I was waiting for them to arrive. Just one of the pairings was that of a true mate. Another one had lost her true mate and chosen one of the enforcers as her new mate. The others... The others had paired at an early age before they could find their true mates, and I knew why they had chosen that path. It was a way to avoid Hunter's attention, but I was confident some regretted that. The first to arrive was Ethel. She was beautiful, but looked way older than she was. I supposed it was part of losing her true mate, but I feared it was in part because of her new mate. Did you call Alpha? She asked, not looking at me, her eyes down, her posture submissive. I did. What I had to talk to them about was mostly for all of them, but she was a special case. Are you happy in your new mating? As happy as I could be, I guess, she said, and I could tell she was sincere. Mitch really does his best. Not much more I could ask of him. You deserve to be happy, to have everything you want. And I do. He lost his mate, too, so we understand each other. We do our best to fill the void our mates left. I need him, and he needs me. It's the best we can do. I know that under Hunter's rule, things weren't the best, and some abuse went ignored, or at least unnoticed. I just wanted to make sure... I started, but she interrupted. I know what you mean, because I've seen it, and I can help you identify the ones with the problem. But it's not my case. I'm not with Mitch because I wanted to be safe from Hunter, or because I thought he was my only option. I'm with him because I want to be. I believe you, and I want you to know that if that changes at any moment, I will help you in any way I can. Just then, the rest of the women walked in. I realized that Ethel was strong enough to walk by herself, while the others were waiting to gather strength in numbers. Did you ask to see us, Alpha? One of them said. I could tell she was terrified, but she was talking for the others either way. Yes, I have an important question to ask you. I could feel them getting smaller, trying to hide as if they were expecting some kind of trap. Do you feel safe where you are? I could tell that wasn't the question they expected. 
Safe? Yes. I know that most of you chose your partners because you were looking for safety. But I wonder if that worked out well for you. Only one of you is paired to her true mate. The others chose who they thought would keep you safe. Is that your reality? Why do you ask? We are mated. It's not like that could change. A woman not much older than me said. I can't help if you don't let me. But if you are not safe, if you are not happy, then I can do my best to fix it. To give you the chance to change your reality. You may be the Alpha, but you have no control over mates. That's what protected us from Hunter. Mating is sacred. Hunter got rid of my father because he wanted my mom. He couldn't force her to accept him, but nothing stopped him from killing her mate. Are you saying you're going to kill our mates if we ask you to? I'm saying there are ways I can help. Maybe they just need a warning that they can't do whatever they want and have to treat you better. Maybe I can help you find your true mates. Nothing is more important than true mates, and they would have to let you go. Or, if there is no other way, I will do whatever I have to do to protect you. As my people, you deserve my protection. Aaron is usually pretty good to me, but he gets rough when he drinks. Maybe if you could warn him to stay away from the bottle, the younger one said timidly. I'll talk to him and keep an eye on him so he becomes more careful. Anyone else? I could see they were afraid. Afraid of what their mates could do. Afraid I wouldn't keep my promise. But little by little, they started talking. It wasn't as bad as I expected. Most of them weren't happy, but they weren't as abused as I feared. Only a couple of them had suffered physical abuse, something I was ready to stop. But it was harder to identify the ones suffering from other types of abuse. At the end, I became even more determined to find their true mates, if possible, even if they didn't want to. I suspected they were refusing out of fear, not because they didn't want the chance to find them. So, how was your day? Fang asked, entering the office. Did you have a good chat with the Enforcer's mates? They claim they are okay, and they are mostly, but still, I feel like there's more I can do. We'll have to talk to a couple of them and make sure they know I will be watching them, but the others claim everything is fine. Just think about it really hard. Taking your Enforcer's mate will cause you trouble with them. You have to win them, not alienate them. If they behave, then I won't have any issues with them. You are very biased still. You have to give them a true chance. I said I'll try. But I knew he was right. I was a bad alpha. My anger to the pack was affecting my decision making. I wanted to punish the enforcers for all the damage they had done in the name of Hunter. And I wanted to save their mates, like I was trying to save myself. I wasn't being fair, but I had plans, and I was going to follow them. The master bedroom is empty, and I was thinking that maybe we could move my stuff there while we get new furniture. That's not a bad idea. But first, I felt like I have to disinfect every corner of the room, maybe a couple of layers of paint. I started... I felt sick just imagining all that had happened in that room, and I didn't want to think about how much of what had happened there was under duress. Whatever you want. Fang said. I had to admit, he was taking the situation much better than I expected him to. I wasn't all that convinced at first, but he had been a great ally during my first few days taking over. And since he had been trained by Hunter to take over, he knew a little about what needed to be done. He was still struggling to be better than his father. And so far, 
he had been doing a good job. I tried to talk to my siblings about being a productive part of the pack, but I'm not hoping for much. Most of them are still young. They should be focusing on studying to be something helpful for the pack. I've been thinking about offering scholarships for the pack teens so they can go to college, as long as they promise to apply whatever they learn to the betterment of the pack. Some other packs do something like that. It's overdue that we implement something similar. I know some of them will be thrilled for the opportunity. The problem here is that the jobs are very limited. By the same lack of skills, I'm hoping that with better education, we could create more opportunities. We became very isolated during your father's reign, and I want to change that. I'm not sure how things were before. As you know, when my father died, a big war had just ended, so alliances were still being built. But maybe we can create new ones. You already did a good job of befriending some of the future alphas, and I think I'm in good standing with the Uber Pack. Even if at first I hadn't liked them very much, I had grown to see that their errors had been, at least, not intentional, and they were trying to fix them. I had been driven by anger for a very long time, but now I was letting go of some of it, and looking at things from a different perspective. We still have a lot of work to do, but we are on the right track. You are the best thing to happen to this pack. Fang said, and I could tell he meant it. I couldn't have done it without you. Or maybe I could have, but it would have been much more difficult. Even if people are still not happy with me, at least they considered you Hunter's heir, and kind of accept your leadership. And yours too. You have earned it. I hate to admit it, but the Uber Pack was right. You needed to fight for this. Otherwise, people would have questioned your position, and that's something that wouldn't have been good for us. Now, let's go see our room and decide on paint colors. The sooner we get done with that, the sooner we can move away from the rest of my family. Yeah, I agreed. We need to move away from their judgmental energy. We need some space, especially once I start moving the rest of them. Those who still don't hate me will start to pretty quick once I make my move. Change wasn't easy, but we needed to start at some point. Those who didn't change became stagnant and disappeared. <laughs>